As long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be an artist. I was always drawing or creating something around the house. That's my mom. When I was five years old, I spent a couple weeks in the hospital for something I can't remember. And to keep the boredom away, she brought me a couple comic books and some drawing paper. It was on that precise day that I decided that I wanted to be an artist. You know all those art shows that you only get to see in the movies? That's how my shows were. I was a painter who liked to make movies. Bodyguards, crowds, the full effect. In 2001, as part of the creative marketing of their show, Harrison, along with Beer Aronson and fellow artist John Duckworth, decided to have a little fun. Touted as the Entropy Show, the show they don't want you to see, they gave a little tip of the hat to the controversy surrounding the Brooklyn Museum when New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani pulled public funding saying the art was obscene. As a result of word spreading about their upcoming art exhibit, a right-wing organization was trying to have them shut down. The People's Coalition, Society of American Decency, or SAD, began a smear campaign. Led by Southern Chapter President Leslie Ann Ridgewater and prominent attorney Wilhelm Randolph Mortimer, and backed by the Reverend Baker G. Morwell, they organized protests that took to the streets months before the opening weekend of the Spoleto Arts Festival. The group went on numerous radio talk shows blasting the artist and calling it trashy art. How dare they paint scenes other than wildlife egrets or low country marsh scenes. More duck art and save Rainbow Row were some of the slogans being yelled at the artists as they arrived to a crowd overflowing into the streets. Ironically, their art wasn't really that controversial at all. The thing is that the picket signs were made by Harrison and Duckworth, and the protesters were really their friends mostly, who dressed the part. Knowing that like the Brooklyn Museum controversy, the more that someone tells you not to do something, the more you want to do it. They waged a smear campaign against themselves, essentially telling everyone not to attend their art opening. It was all part of the show that worked out so well that it attracted the attention of GMR, a large Chicago-based marketing firm. In May of 2002, GMR hired Harrison to create a mock riot in Chicago's city center as part of the release of a new Unilever body spray called Axe. And in December of that year, he was hired to help create a three-day event as part of a degree gel weekend, with 200 sweepstakes winners flown in from all over the country to the Cayman Islands, culminating with a live beachside concert by the band Garbage emceed by Harrison himself. What started out as a little art stunt turned into a full-fledged career. After nearly six years as a painter, independent filmmaker, graphic artist and photographer, Kevin joined forces with PDA a production company based out of Charleston, South Carolina. He accepted the creative director position and along with his assistant Victoria began filming and editing projects that had profound impacts. He says that for him it all begins and ends with the camera. In 2006 I won Best Documentary for a film about a national spoken word event called Word Clash. It took place near the site of the first lunch counter sit-ins that sparked the civil rights movement. And in 2007, I was hired to direct Remember, a Holocaust story about Auschwitz survivors. You've heard I often say Lechayim. Lechayim means life. A 
Over the past nine years, I've been lucky enough to have the opportunity to work with some very talented shooters and producers. Hungarian-born filmmaker Zsolt Harasti has been my go-to partner in crime and continues to be to this day. When Tim McManus joined our team as our Cracker Jack producer, the final piece of the puzzle was in place. And since then, we've been working on more documentaries, animations, commercials, and marketing pieces for several national clients. For the third straight year, I was the video director for Charleston Fashion Week, and once again, we're producing a documentary film of the event. So when someone asks, do I prefer video or painting, I always tell them it's all part of the same ball of creativity. From the painting to the filmmaking, it all starts and ends with the camera. In October of last year, we went to India to film another documentary about a global designer. We traveled over 3,000 kilometers across the desert in search of inspiration. And what we found was a deeper appreciation for the lives we have and the friends we keep. India was a place where every living thing has a purpose and where art knows no boundaries. One month later, my wife and five-year-old daughter traveled to China to adopt our second child. It was another whirlwind adventure and the circle was completed. My name is Kevin and I am proud to be a filmmaker. <laughs>